In this series, we are gonna solve the best problems from AdCoder and we're gonna learn a lot from them. So let's get started. In the first episode of this series, I want to discuss this problem stamp rally with you from Grand Contest 2 problem D. Well, this problem states that we have a graph and this graph is weighted and the weight of each edge is the index of that edge. For example, this is edge number one, so its weight is one and so on. And the number of vertices is N, which is up to 10 to the power of five and M, the number of edges is also up to 10 to the power of five. And the graph is connected. So this problem gives you Q queries and each query is like this. You are given two vertices like XI and YI and it says that two brothers are living in these two vertices of the graph and they want to visit at least Z of I vertices. So each one of them should visit some vertices so that in total they're gonna visit at least z of i vertices. And if both of them visit the same vertex then that one will be counted only once. And what they can do is to traverse the edges. They should just traverse the edges and they should go through the passes to different vertices and they are allowed to visit some vertex or edge many times. That's not a problem. So we want to minimize the maximum index of an edge that they are gonna visit. Okay so initially as soon that q is equal to 1 so we have only one q area. how can we solve this problem pause the video and think about that if q is equal to 1 we can simply use a binary search over all the edges and find the answer i mean assume that your answer is gonna be at most mid the mid of your binary search then you're gonna only add all the edges with indices at most mid and you will see what is the sum of the sizes of the components of xi and y you can simply use a dsu to find that out and when you know if the connected components were the same you should only just compare that size with zi and if they were not the same you should sum them up and compare that with zi if that was greater than or equal to zi then indeed you can visit at least zi vertices otherwise you cannot it was also possible we could just add the edges one by one each time add a new edge and each time after adding each edge we just see what is the connected component of x and what is the connected component of y and each time i uh, compare the current thing we have with zi if they are from the same components compare that side with zi and if they are from different compare the sum with zi and the first place that this value was greater than or equal to zi you say that okay this is my answer so now the case where q is equal to 1 is solved and now in general case we have a solution with time complexity of o of for each query we have two solutions the first one was using binary search which is log of n because our answer is from 0 to n times n log star of n which is the order for dsq or you can assume n log of n if you're not familiar with log star and if you are not gonna use binary search then our time complexity is going to be q times n log star of n so this is our solution but it is slow so now we have to optimize our solution so we have to think about what we can remove what type of calculations do we have such that we have to remove them if we analyze our solution, especially the binary search solution, well, if we consider this binary search solution for each of the queries, we know that its answer is, for example, from 0 to n, and we have a binary search for it. We know that for each one of them, we will keep adding the edges until the middle point, and then check the size of xi and 1i and compare it with zi. So we keep adding the edges until we reach this mix. We also do the same thing for the second query and also for the third query. We keep adding edges. Well, the xi and yi's are different, but each time we are adding the same edges. Well, this seems to be too much. This seems redundant. Well, so instead of this, maybe an idea to optimize our solution is to just add these edges only once and then answer all of these binary search queries. I mean answer for all of them that if their uh, final answer is less than or equal to meet or is greater than it. So this way we are optimizing our solution. So the first step of the binary search, we only add these edges once. But what about the second time? Well, the second time we are not looking for the same place. Some of the queries are looking for here and some of them are looking for here and we have to handle both of the cases. So how do we do that in the next steps? The place that we are gonna ask that specific query is different. Well, the main idea in here is that yes, it's possible that they are different, but assume that we have Q passengers and there is a bus and this bus is going through this path. And each of the passengers have a destination. For example, passenger number one wants to 
get out of the bus here, the second one was here. Each one of them have a place that they want to get out of the bus. So the question is that do we really need queue buses so that for each of the passengers we get them to the place they want to be? Of course we don't. Well, we can have only one bus and they can be in this bus and whenever we reach their destination, they can just get out of the bus. So the same thing happens in parallel binary search. We just say that we are in the round number i. For all of the queries, we want to move all of them one step forward in the binary search. So each one of them have some current mid. We have a vector for each of the elements and in the vector of mid of i, we just push back i. So that we keep in mind that whenever I reached mid of i, I should answer this query. The binary search of this query is on this place. So after I reach any place I have a 4 on this vector and I will check all of them I will compare them with their value of z of i and if their value was greater than or equal to z of i I set their high to be mid of i and otherwise I will set their low to be their mid of i so that's the main thing when we have a bus and each passenger wants to get off at some place we do not need two different buses we can have just one bus which goes forward and each of these passengers can get up whenever they want. So we have a four. This four can be from zero to 20, for example. And each time we have a four on all of the queries, each one of them have some low of i and high of i. Low of i is initially zero, high of i is initially n. And then we have a four, and for each one of them, we say that mid of i is equal to low of i plus high of i divided by two, and then vec of mid of i that push back i, only if their binary search is not done. I mean, the difference between high of i and low of i is greater than one. If it is not, we can just uh, push them back to their vector, and then add all the edges one by one, and whenever we reach some point that one of the passenger wants to get out of the bus, we just stop there and that passenger will get out so we will just stop here when we added these edges and we answer that specific query this binary search will take at most log of n steps is off log of n steps and for each of these log of n steps we are gonna have only one dst which is gonna be n log star of n and for each of the queries we will answer them only once which is gonna be q times log star of n we have several problems and we solve them all together parallel each time we will move each of these binary search one step forward are we done now of course not. So what is the second amazing solution? Well, assume that we have this problem. We have a graph and the edges will be added one by one. You want to see that if you only consider edges up to meet all the edges from one to meet. Are X and Y in the same connected component or not? Just pause the video and think about this problem. But the solution to this problem is really beautiful. We can run DSU only once and just keep the history of how we changed everything. What do I mean? I mean that whenever you merge two vertices, for example, you have two vertices X and Y and you want to merge them. So what you will do, consider the root of the connected component of Y and the root of the connected component of X and you will make one of them the child of the other one. So now assume that for each vertex we have a vector vector of pair of ints and ints of history so that we keep all of its roots that it ever had in DSU. So when we want to merge these two connected components, assume that this vertex is R sub X and this one is R sub Y, the roots of the connected components of X and Y. When we want to merge them, we say that for example, pair of R Y is equal to R X usually. Now we change it to the kind of DSU that we have a four on all of the vertices in the smaller components, which its order was N log N. And for each one of them, for example, for each vertex V in this connected component we say history of that vertex v dot pushback pair of t which is the index of this current edge and rx it means that we save that at time t the root of vertex v became vertex r of x so we just keep track of the history of all of the roots that each vertex has had well now we can also have another history some history for the sizes we can have another vector of pairs which is history of the sizes the size is max so if you only keep that for the roots for each vertex v we just keep track of whenever it was a root of some subtree what was the size of that subtree so when we merge the two subtrees it's only enough to update this value for rx 
the root, only root has this number. So we can just save that, we can, in he, here, in history, size, we can just save in time t, the size of the connected component that rx was the root of it, has became this new size, we show it with s. So we just, for the roots, we keep track of what was their sizes in different times. So this time, the history sizes of the vertices, for example, this history size of rx is from theta of n. Because it's possible that you only have one connected component and you add edges to that one by one. So it will increase one by one. So the size will be of uh, theta of n. So this time, we need to have a binary search. We know that when we have two vertices, x and y, we want to find out at time t, what was their connected component and what was the size of their connected components. First, we find the roots at that specific time. And after that, we find the roots. We can just have a binary search for those roots and see that at that time, for this root, what was the size of its subtree? So this way, we can simply find out the answers. And the good point is that this solution is online not offline. Once we keep a query, we can answer it before getting the next query. So if this problem wanted us to solve this problem online and we didn't want to solve it using parallel binary search, we could just do this. Okay, are we done? No, there's another solution. Well, the third solution is that we construct a tree at the beginning and then we are going to use that tree. Well, we construct the tree like this. Whenever we want to merge two subtrees, for example, x and y have some edge, so we consider r of x and r of y as the roots of the subtrees, we just add another vertex and make both of them the child of that vertex. So each time that we have a merge, we add another vertex. So we don't make one of them the child of the other one. We add another vertex and make both of them the child of that new vertex. And also, we set the weight of this edge to be the time that this edge has came, or the index of that specific edge. Now, when you want to find at some time t, what are the roots of x and y, x i and y i, and what is the size of the roots, you can just do something similar to LCA. You can run a DFS in the final tree that you have. For example, you have a tree like this at the end. You can start a DFS from the roots of this tree and go downwards. And for each vertex, just keep the parents of distance 2 to the power of i from it and also keep that what was the maximum edge in this class the maximum edge was definitely the last edge so just keep uh, the index of that last edge as well so we just keep what is the parent of number 2 to the power of i and also what is the maximum edge that we have in this class so now when for some two vertices x i and y i we want to find out at time t what is the roots and what is their sizes we go forward as long as all these edges have indices at most t and for the this one as well. And we find what are the root and what is the size of the components of those two subtrees. I recommend you to implement all these three solutions and make sure to watch the next video from that process. See you.